If you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to Shanka show. We continue our topic about vacation in the USSR and more specifically uh, traveling abroad. We covered the topic but it's still several things I would like to tell you about and today is actually a story about one of my friends who managed to travel with his family to Bulgaria so I thought it'll be interesting for you to learn from the actual person who went uh, to the other country because as I mentioned before I don't know anyone from my circle of friends and family back in Kiev that went uh, overseas uh, I know two guys in my class who went in who were in Germany but not because they traveled as a tourist but because their uh, fathers were military officers and they were stationed in Eastern Germany of course G GDR German Democratic Republic. So they lived there for several years. Um, otherwise, I didn't know anyone who managed to get Putyovka, you should know that word by now, the travel voucher and go somewhere else uh, except uh, Crimea, the Black Sea area. So in this email, my friend Rodion, uh, he mentions that it, it was really hard to get any Putyovka going to uh, other countries, even uh, Bulgaria and you should have connections as another word you should know by now you should have blood and I said most of the time there was um, like communist uh, party members like in the management uh, and also people who worked in retail uh, you should also know by now that if you work in retail and you had access to goods and there'll be people who need the goods and if you need putyovka you can uh, cut the agreement like hey i'll help you to get refrigerator without waiting if you can help me to get a putyovka to bulgaria uh, another category of people in soviet union who could have a uh, better access to putyovkas were doctors specifically gynecologists and dentists that's the people that uh in exchange for providing good service, uh, they might be able to get Putyovka from someone someone who has access to those. Same thing, uh, Radion mentions that he didn't know anyone among his friends or schoolmates who went uh, uh, to the other country for vacation, although uh, his father, uh, who had friends in um, like uh, among doctors, he heard that some people went as far as Egypt. I've mentioned that before, that there were actually Putyovkas to Egypt. Uh, but they got lucky and they went in 1989 uh, to Bulgaria. His father managed to get uh, Putyovkas and he actually used the word Vibit, which is like hammered out. So he had to push really hard and pull the strings. Uh, and, and he finally managed to get Putyovka, which was quite pricey. So we're talking 1989. So this is the final the years of the Soviet Union and the prices changed quite a bit. So Putyovka for the family uh, to Bulgaria was a thousand rubles, which is a lot of money. But because you are a member of the uh, labor union, uh, you pay usually only about 30% of the cost, the rest is the covered by a labor union. And this is the only thing I remember as a benefit of being a labor um, member of the labor union in Soviet Union. Uh, you have discounts uh, for Putyovkas, otherwise uh, you pay your dues and usually uh, labor union is always lined up with the management because you know how can you fight communist uh, leadership uh, when you're a union member you should be always on the same page so bulgaria was the most uh, accessible destination in those years and the most popular uh, because it was south of russia so it was another like a vacation to the sunny uh, warm uh, black sea so similar to crimea but you go to the other country uh, so it was not, I would say, cheap thousand rubles. That's not cheap. But, um, you know, most people have said if they uh, go on vacation, they wanted to go somewhere where they can get some nice tan. Uh, they want to get all crisped up and be red as the boiled uh, crawfish and get some diarrhea. 
as we talked about it before. Uh, but since the Bulgaria was very similar to Soviet Union, uh, Bulgarian language is very similar. So after short practice, you can kind of understand Bulgarian. Most Bulgarians, uh, they understood Russian really well. So that was easy for the uh, people from Russia to talk to locals. And since it was very similar, they had some red flags, you know, banners. It's just the, instead of uh, Communist Party of Soviet Union banners, there was Communist Party of Bulgaria banners. So there was KPB instead of KP uh, SS, like we say, Soviet Union is as Soviet Soviet Soyuz so will be Kappa uh, KPCC kind of thing on the banners. So, and there was even a saying that uh, Kurica Niptica Bulgaria Nizagranica, which actually tr you can translate in its rhymes as well, that chicken is not. It's not actually a bird, and Bulgaria is not actually going abroad. So this is what the saying was popular in the Soviet Union about people who said probably, well, I went abroad, and they're like, where did you go? I went to Bulgaria. Well, Bulgaria, you know, it's just like chicken is not exactly a bird, Bulgaria is not exactly going abroad. Okay, I need to be corrected. He went in 1987, so not 1989. So his whole family uh, went, and as it, again, uh, he says, we went as a group. So uh, in their group, they had also uh, a couple, an older couple from Kazakhstan, along with their granddaughter. And prior the trip to Bulgaria, uh, they already managed, had a trip to Yugoslavia. Uh, but the reason why they were getting access to Putyovkas is because they were famous uh, sheep herders. So they you know, had a big uh, collective farm where they raised sheep, sheep, and they earned this Putyovka for doing some great work in uh, sheep management. Uh, so as I said, it was pretty expensive. It was very hard to get. Like his father, Rodion's father, had to work really hard to get access to Putyovka. And uh, we already talked about uh, all the hoops that Soviet people had to jump through in order to get approved to be a tourist. And apparently kids, they also needed a special paperwork from school. From uh, So in every class, you had a teacher who would be like a, your lead teacher. So he's in charge of all class. So it'll be like a class leader. So she's a teacher. So maybe she teaches math or any other science. But at the same time, her second kind of part job is she's in charge of specific class. She's a class leader. You know, she deals with parents and stuff like that. So a kid, if he goes to the other country, he'll need to get charakteristika. So there's another word you need to learn. Uh, which was big deal in Soviet Union is charakteristika. So it's like your personal uh, character paper. So the lay is the teacher will write like he's a good pupil, he's polite, he nice kid. So the kid had to bring from school paperwork too to get approved to go with parents to the other country. Their group uh, had a special meeting with people who instructed them how to behave in other country, and the kids had a separate uh, in instructions uh, meeting, and that was more about that uh, how they need to act, because they're gonna have official meeting with the uh, young kids from Bulgaria. Also, they had so-called pioneers. I covered that topic in my videos earlier about the school in Soviet Union. So there was a planned meeting with Bulgarian pioneers and they, uh, that this, our kids supposed to bring some souvenirs to exchange to, because there'll be official kind of like a exchange of souvenirs between kids. Um, and we already talked about Vysotsky, the famous uh, uh, Soviet uh, bard singer. And he has a really good song dedicated for this instructions kind of thing uh, for the tourists. And I'll put it in the link below this video. All right, moving along. Uh, also, Radion mentions that at that time, so 1987, they actually increased amount of money you can exchange. Adult could exchange 500 rubles worth of uh, into the local currency, which in Bulgaria is called leva, lev, like a lion, I guess. And a kid, uh, they, they can use 250 rubles. They had a, spe a special um, rate for exchange was one to one. So you buy one lev uh, with one ruble. And supposedly it was like a special good rate. But in fact, he said it was interesting. A lot of items uh, were more expensive in Bulgaria 
comparing the same items uh, in Soviet Union. For example, uh, he mentions uh, Bulgarian. We had uh, quite a few uh, cigarettes from Bulgaria for sale in Soviet Union. And he said the pack of uh, uh, cigarettes called Phoenix were about 80 kopecks in Bulgaria versus 50 kopecks uh, in Soviet Union. So it's kind of interesting that in Bulgaria, Bulgarian cigarettes were more expensive than Bulgarian cigarettes in Soviet Union. And of course, the Radion, uh, that friend of mine, he was a kid back uh, then, but he remembers a trip to the shopping center in Bulgaria. And he said after his uh, small town stores to see the shopping area in Bulgaria was real shock uh, because there were so much stuff for sale. And um, he actually forced his parents well, I guess he was more like a teenager uh, to buy some uh, LPs uh, of a mod modern talking band. So those were like in high demand in Soviet Union. The band was really popular. I think they started like in 1985, if I recall, modern talking from Germany. And you couldn't get the LPs of them uh, in Soviet Union. They were really deficit. But he forced his parents back them to buy some uh, in Bulgaria and he brought them home. And uh, he also remembers that he was really shocked to see all this alcohol and uh, whiskeys. They went to the local uh, so-called Valutny magazine. There's a separate topic about stores which were uh, selling stuff only for hard, so-called hard currency, for foreign currency, so for dollars or British pounds or German Deutschmarks. Now, we had them in Soviet Union too called Berioska. In Bulgaria, they whole, had the similar stores co called Koryak, and that's where you can buy foreign goods for foreign currency. And of course, Soviet people didn't officially allow head currency, so there was stores for the foreigners. So he went to that store in Bulgaria, and he was shocked uh, to see all that uh, selection. And he said he remembers uh, different, uh, like a candy in this giant uh, metal boxes and a huge bottle of Scottish whiskey. And that's what the very first time he met someone foreign, there was a lady and a grandma with two kids and they were speaking English. So that's the first time I met a foreigner that was in Bulgaria. And of course, uh, when the Soviet tourists traveled to the other country like Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, they discovered that there was a huge price difference uh, between similar items or there would be goods that you couldn't get at all in Soviet Union. So that's when uh, there'll be my next video about how people started uh, smuggling money or goods while going on vacation in order to bring some stuff back and sell it for profit or, you know, keep it for themselves, like American Levi's jeans and other things. So this will cover in our next video. And that's uh, quite a topic because I participated in the later movement. I technically was a tourist going to Poland, but I, in fact, I was smuggling vodka for sale um, uh, to Poland. So that will be my next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please don't forget to put like. And as always, thank you for support of uh, my channel. I appreciate everyone who uh, sent me some money on PayPal or supports me for Patreon. It's greatly appreciated because YouTube definitely uh, doesn't pay much uh, to produce the videos. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.